Oh, that's that's pitiful. Look at the belly. Look at that belly. belly. Before we get started with this video, though, guys, just wanted to let you know, since I'm back in the Auburn main area, I decided to take the RV back to Greeley's. I'm bribing the mechanics to fix my RV. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. To have them also do the front uh, components, the rotors and the pads, ceramic pads and the calipers and wheel bearings and everything. So now the entire chassis is Chevy OEM. They're a mechanic that I trust and this is more preventative maintenance. There wasn't really anything wrong with the front brakes, but because they did so good and they have the capabilities to put those parts on, I just decided to make Maine the place where we just start from scratch and make Yoda as good as she's gonna be. So feeling good about that, but Jax and I spent another entire day in a lobby, which wasn't necessarily fun for us, but lucky for you, you didn't have to sit around for an extra day and see any more of that. So uh, back to normally scheduled programming right now. Here's the plan for today to get our day started. I'm gonna go weigh this RV. It has been about six months since I have weighed the RV. Now, every RV out there has a maximum weight that you can load that RV and actually physically weigh. Where that's located in every RV, I don't know. But for my Fleetwood Tioga, it's right here in my cupboard on this little white piece of paper right here. See, there is my cargo carrying capacity. So the most important number on this is going to be the gross vehicle weight rating. This first one up here, which is 12,300 pounds. That means this RV should never weigh more than 12,300 pounds fully loaded anytime on the road at any point. Also look at this, it actually has the old water weight on here, 36 gallon tank, 8.33 pounds per gallon, means this RV started at 300 pounds of water. Now you may also remember last summer I swapped out that 36 gallon stock for a 58 gallon water tank, which added some physical weight, right? Well, let's talk about that weight real quick. Let's do some math. If my 58 gallon water tank was all the way full, which it has never been full, I never, maybe when I'm boondocking out in Arizona, but if it's all the way full at 8.33 pounds per extra gallon, then I added a total of 183 pounds to the water capacity on top of that 300, if it's full. So instead of 300, I could potentially have 483 pounds of water. But Let's look at something else. So look at this. The RV is also already rated for five people at 154 pounds a person, giving me 770 pounds of people weight. Well, although Jax and I may both be overweight, I weigh 183 pounds, Jax weighs 24.2 pounds. We're nowhere near that 770 pound weight right there. So what's another 183 added to the water when we haven't even begun to dip into the already allowed people weight on this list. Let's keep going. Also, it's letting us know what the front gross weight and the rear gross weight axles are allowed to have each. So 4,300 on the front and up to 8,600 on the rear. That is important to know as well. Underneath that is the hitch rating, 3,500 pounds of towing, max tongue weight, 350 pounds. Also talk about that one real quick. The motorcycle weighed, the TW200, weighed 287 pounds with a 40 pound carrier. I was never over the 350 pound weight. We talked about the water thing I added. Also, I have five AGM batteries in here. It came stock with two at I think 55 pounds a piece and I've added three more. So there's another additional 160 pounds and three extra batteries on board. I'm just trying to think weight wise what else I have added. Okay, so I got rid of the entire dinette and uh, put in a couch. I don't think the couch weighs any more than the old dinette wood did. Um, the table certainly weighs a little more. The TV weighs more. I've got two solar panels on the roof that weigh 55 pounds a piece. So, you know, we're starting to add up. Uh, but I mean, it is curious, you know, have we overloaded this RV? So at this point right now, I have got this thing pretty much fully loaded as much as possible. The water tank is about three quarters full. That's about as full as I ever get it on a regular basis. As far as cargo, yeah, I've got beer and soda stored up and cat food and other essentials that I have to have on the road, food and groceries. And uh, uh, let's do the math of the old motorcycle. So 287 pounds plus 40 pounds on the weight of the carrier. A total of 327 pounds were on the back. But right now, I haven't gotten rid of that entire weight because I've added 40 pounds of two carriers and a 38 pound bike. So that's 78 pounds that are still on the back. I have reduced the weight on the back right now, but uh, technically 
a month ago, I did have more weight on the back. So this becomes the moment of truth. No matter what happens at the scales, I am going to show it to you guys. I am going to reveal what happened. I think I'm underweight. If I'm overweight, then uh, a lot of you were right and I was wrong. But I mean, that's a good thing to know. We need to know, right? So I'm going to show you the process for driving this thing over to the cat scales, get it officially and certified weighed. Here we go. All right, Jax, let's go get weighed. Suck it in. Go ahead and, go ahead and suck it in, Jax. Yeah, OK, cool. <laughs> All right, so we'll pull into this uh, Irving gas station, but it's also a CAT certified way station. And uh, you know, the only reason I picked this one is because I called around. I don't need to set up an account with CAT like a professional driver and get weighed you know, every single day on the road. I just want to do it one time every like six months or something like that probably. So this one allows you to just go through, get weighed, come inside and pay cash. Isn't that awesome? Okay. Here we go. So this is one of the ones that weighs each axle. So I get my front wheels up to one scale and then my rear axle will be on another scale. So um, I'll just show you what this is like. It's been about six months since I've done it. There we go. I got to get out and push a button though. This is the first way, right? Yes, it is. Truck number? Uh, we'll just call it RV69. RV69? Yes. Alright, thank you. Scale. Come on in. Thank you. Okay, so I'll just pull into one of these uh, truck slots right here. Go inside, pay my $11, get a printout and I will share that information with you when I get back inside. Here we go, all certified. I will go over this in detail. I wanna head back to Renee's place there. I will just say I am underweight in every single category here, but there are still some things I want to talk about once we get parked and kind of go over this and the exact specifications for this RV. So something really important, hang on, hang on just a second trying to uh, fix the glare of the bottom one is the one we're looking at can you see that says 12,100 pounds and also the drive axle 8260 the front steer axle 3840 again max gross weight 12,300 we are currently just 200 pounds underneath the maximum weight of this RV total we are allowed 4,300 pounds on the front axle and we're at 3840 and on the rear axle, we are allowed 8,600 pounds, and we're at 8,260. So what does this tell us? A couple things. First of all, neither of my axles are overweight. That's great news. Secondly, as of this second right now, my RV is not overweight. Not overweight by a whopping 200 pounds, which is fine right now. But remember how I was talking about what's the added difference right now with the motorcycle and the bike? I told you guys I was going to eat my words if I'm wrong, right? Okay. Well, a month ago today, compared to right now, with the change from the motorcycle and carrier with the current bicycle and carrier is a difference of 249 pounds. Add 249 pounds to 12,100 and we would have been over the weight allowed on this RV. As time goes, you start to pick up more uh, stuff. This cupboard is uh, a little bit heavier. And uh, I just acquire more things. So this is one of those things that's making me be a little more mindful about what I carry with the RV, as well as how I acquire stuff in the RV. Uh, I got sidetracked earlier, sorry. I forgot where I was going with that, but what I've been doing is working on reducing some of the weight in the RV down a little bit, what I can do. And that means coming to, to two conclusions. Let's go inside. Essentially going through some things and reevaluating their enjoyment of quality of life on the road. So I've actually removed all of my magnets and the steel plates that were here, the ones that were on the vent. Those steel plates are right here for the magnets. And <laughs> the magnets 
14 pounds of five years worth of collecting magnets. I don't know how many total tapes I have. These hold uh, 42 a piece and this holds 120. And then I've got some extras down below. I've got my two tape players and stuff like that. This was a hard choice for me, but after talking with my friend Renee here, he's gonna let me store some stuff in his basement downstairs so that I don't have to sell it or get rid of it or lose it, uh, but that's gonna free up some, some weight in the RV because I had to think about the quality of life with the cassette tapes. I love listening to music. I love my cassette tapes. It makes way more sense than having the cassette tapes just have the tiny little iPod full of way more music and to play them through speakers and stuff or headphones inside the RV. So for the time being, until things change, if they change, but in this RV right now, I'm gonna do what I can do to take the weight off and to test the theory of that weight. I have uh, borrowed a little foot scale here. I'm gonna weigh myself and then I'm gonna grab some items and see how much weight difference. So let's uh, see what I weigh first. 184.6, I gained a pound since yesterday. Whew, 257.2. All right, now we'll do the, the last tape deck and the two players. Two forty-one point eight. I also filled a garbage can there full of garbage. I've got two more garbage cans down here. I'm gonna get rid of one of my three fans because it's getting winter time anyway. And I realized that I only really use two nonstop in the summertime when I need it. This table is another thing. It's incredibly helpful sometimes, but guess what? I literally used this four times in the last year total. Only four times that I bring this outside the RV and set it up. So the added weight of all of this let me go check. 68 pounds total right there as well. So there we go. What have we done today? We have released 14 pounds of magnets, 73 pounds for the first tape handheld stuff, 57 pounds of the second thing in my hands, and another 68 pounds total with the table and the garbage and the stuff that I'm donating. 212 pounds I just freed up on my RV. Might not sound like that much, but remember when we got weighed, I was only 200 pounds under the limit. So now I'm more than 400 pounds under the limit right now. And that is huge, but you gotta think, I mean, I'm literally thinking about small stuff now, like the extra three or four bags of cat food that I've got in the back. I do that because it's cheaper to, to buy it when I can get it rather than paying you know, a heftier price later or stocking up things on Barley Pop or, or Gatorade or, or, or back when I had multiple cases of soda ready to go. All that weight adds up and you really don't have much to play with in an RV, okay? I think I'm allowed up to like 1,800 pounds of extra cargo capacity pounds once the RV's all ready to go, you know? So for camping and little trips, that's gonna be great. But for living in it and having solar and, and batteries and, and my entire life is in this RV, it's really tough and tricky to think about reducing it down that much more. Um, so for today, I have released another 212 pounds off the RV. I had mentioned that uh, my main travel plans for the summer had changed a little bit because of the brake issues. Eventually we're gonna have to start heading south as the temperatures cool off here and summer comes to an end. So see you guys soon. Bye. You know my plans changed in Maine because hey <laughs> the autofocus is focusing on Han Solo. <laughs> There's a box around Han Solo's face but not mine. Hey I want to be in focus. Cannon look at my there we go. That's so funny. <laughs> it's back on Han Solo's face. Oh, I love autofocus, face tracking. <laughs> That's awesome. May the force be with you.